Hello, Jamie from Inky and Scrappy sharing with you today a card four in my card series featuring Lawn Fawn's Pool Party stamp set. Welcome back to all of my subscribers and if you are new here please consider subscribing so you can be alerted when new videos go up on the channel. So I started with some Uhuhu alcohol markers. Copics would work just fine as well. I want to say I colored with 104, but I'm not positive on that one. And then I added in some dot detail with some darker shades of brown. So I want to say I pulled from 102, 134, 103, 100, 128, and 104. Those were the ones I had all out and ready to go, but I didn't use them all. I used like three. And then, of course, I added some white dots for some dot detail as well with my gel pen. And it gives it that sand look. So I'm coloring the tree stumps here with mm, the darkest shade was 98 and then the next shade down was 95. Spending more time on the items that are actually going to be layered on top of my background panel here. I don't own too many background panels but this beach one from Lawn Fawn is probably one of my favorite background scene panels. You know, we're at the beach. I love the beach. <sighs> so I did spend more time on the pieces that are going to layer on top, and it looks like a hot mess, and it's my favorite type of coloring because you don't have to go inside the lines for the most part. Just had to be careful on the frame and then where my trees met my frame on the side. But even then, it, the pieces that go over the top end up covering that up anyway, so it didn't really matter. So I grabbed a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock to do some ink blending on here. I am starting with some Salty Ocean Distress Oxide ink using some Avery Removable Adhesive Label Sheet for my masking paper. And then coming in with my brush here and then just slathering on that salty ocean. I tried to get it a little bit darker towards my horizon line and then faded down lighter as we came closer to and it really does look like a hot mess in person at this point. Now after my card is all done and it is completely dry it looks a lot better. So if your ink blending oh, is less than you want it to be, sometimes you just got to walk away, let it dry, and come back to it. You'll see in a little while why I say that. But I did just cut out a piece of adhesive, or, or that masking paper with a one inch circle. I wanted to make a sun. So I've done bigger suns than this one. I just wanted this one to be kind of littler and further off in the distance. It, you know. I've done the bigger ones, and the big ones look absolutely gorgeous as well. But I had not as much real estate on this one because I made my water deeper. I don't know, fuller in the card. You know, my horizon line was further up than if I would have done it the other way. Then maybe I'd have done a bigger sun. And I didn't want it all the way set. I just wanted to start. So I'm coming in here with some carved pumpkin some abandoned coral, and then I'm going to pull in some tumbled glass. And yeah, they're all fairly big jumps. I'm not going to lie to you. I really <sighs> did not love my blend on this one. It looks great now, like what, four days later than it did when I was done with it. So that's why I say if it looks like a hot mess, sometimes we just have to walk away and let it dry. And, and this was one of those times where I should have just, you know, walked away and let it dry because I didn't like it. And I probably wouldn't have had a spray over the top and would have had that seamless blend that I wanted without the water effect. But I wasn't that patient. So. I had to work a little bit harder on this one to get it to blend just because my colors were so drastic there. And then we're going to pull that blue back in again. And I think it was the blue to the pink one that I had the hardest time with. And it looks fine now that it's all done. But 
at the time I was not in love with it. And this is why you should be patient and or dry your project before you use masking paper on the bottom part that you already spritzed. If I knew I was going to spritz the top, I wouldn't spritz the bottom before I started my blend on the top. But I hadn't originally planned on spritzing the top at all. I spritzed it because I didn't like my blend. And spritzing it covers up said blend. Or, you know, distracts from it not being all the way you can see. Mmm. It was all good. So I grabbed my die cut pieces here and I'm going to fix my horizon line. It wasn't exactly straight when I was done with my piece of paper. So I just ended up putting it on a little bit kitty wampus to actually straighten it out. I, you know, you have wiggle room when you have a frame. It's all good. So I used my wiggle room. So I'm going to add all of those pieces that are on top. So yes, that hot mess actually turns out really pretty in the end. So my tree trunks are going to be flat on my panel there. And then I'm going to pop up half of my palm tree fronds. I think they're called fronds. Are they called fronds? Palms? I don't know. Anyways, so I'm going to pop those up on half. And then where it touches the frame, I'm going to glue that down straight to the bottom. And yes, I grabbed the wrong one. I'm telling you, it was like, I'm pretty sure I had a headache when I made this one. It's been a week or a couple of weeks. I feel like I'm super behind. <sighs> so I'm just going to add in all of my die cut pieces here. So let's see. We had four city thrashers last weekend. If you follow me on Instagram, I did share some videos and some pictures. None of myself because... I can't take pictures of myself while I'm behind the camera. No, I think my mother has some of me with my nephews and my niece, but I didn't get any of them. So none of me, just of the rest of the guys doing their thing. So it's fun every year. It's great when it's over because it's a lot of work. Less work for me than it is for my husband because he does all of the thrashing. I just take pictures and watch. I think I drove the train for like six times around the track because my nephews wanted to ride and I'm nothing but a good aunt you know I don't get to spoil them that often I gotta do it when I can the coconuts on the tree come from you will see in that left corner the the um 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 I can't think of the name the hammock sitting there because I was thinking about putting the one unicorn in the hammock but it just didn't look right do I have a do we have a laying down unicorn from Lawn Fawn that's like the side view I'm gonna have to search my stash I don't think we do but maybe there's something that I could figure out to put the unicorn in the hammock anyways the hammock wasn't gonna work with this one so I did not cut it out. And then for my little unicorn in the tube, I decided I wanted it tucked underneath. I guess if I went to glued it down, I could have tucked it underneath. I just took my pop-out piece there as a stencil to cut it. Excuse me. And then I'm going to put Mama Unicorn. Or maybe they're all the same size because the other ones are further back, so they're smaller. Hmm. This is a good question. I don't know. Now I have to think about it. Anyways, I am using the unicorn from Party Unicorn that was free last year as the birthday set from Lawn Fun. So a little Miss Party Unicorn has her little beach ball. Yes, I was going to put a drink in her hand, but I was trying to use just the pool party set. <sighs> since I've been really bad about actually using on the beach almost as much or more than pool party. So maybe it should be an on the beach slash pool party stamp series. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so I'm going to tuck that ball into her hands here. And then I'm just dabbing up the glue that did not like oozed out from beneath her hooves. And then I will pop her up onto my card base here. And
And at this point, I decided it needed a three. So you know how visually you want a triangle or you look for a triangle. And really, it probably would have been fine with palm trees coming up. It kind of gives you that visual swoop, which would have been fine. But I was looking at the unicorns, focused on the unicorns, and I was like, it, it's missing something right there. And so, yeah, right there. So I was like, well, I could do the little snorkel coming up out of the water would be kind of cute. So I did end up stamping and coloring both a partial unicorn. So I just stamped the top half of the unicorn. And then I did end up stamping the snorkel out as well. And I just hand cut them out because. I didn't want to fire up the scan and cut for two little images. So it took me a little bit of time. I slit my hole in my water there so I could actually have it coming up and out of the water. It probably would have looked okay if I had just cut it and laid it on top, but I wanted it to actually look like it was popping out of the water. So before I do that, I am going to stamp my sentiment on here, you know, because I already have all these layers of foam tape and adding a sentiment at this point is the smartest thing to do, right? I should have done it <sighs> before all of the foam tape hit the place. But anyways, that's why we have a Misty, right? I spent the money on the Misty for this purpose. This reason and purpose, and this is why I'm going to use it, right? And that's the back of my head. Say hi, back of Jamie's head. <clears throat> All right, so back to what I was doing here. So I'm using some Versafine Onyx Black ink to stamp my sentiment. It makes it nice and black on top of the Distress Oxide ink. I smeared it at some point. I couldn't even tell you when I smeared it because it still looks beautiful there, right? <sighs> yeah, I don't know when I smeared it. Probably when I cut the back side. Nope, it's still pretty at this point. You'll notice it later. Don't worry. That's what they make embellishments for. So I'm adding my snorkel to my unicorn. Yeah, see, I just totally just did the top part of the unicorn because I knew that's all that was sticking out of the water. And so I'm just going to slide that up there. And so then my little unicorn is kind of peeking out of the water. So when I wiggled my unicorn into the background, I must have smeared my sentiment. <sighs> so I noticed it. And instead, I decided to add some sparkle to the unicorn horns. Because, you know, all things sparkly considered is good. And I needed to think about this one for a little while. The choices we make in life, right? So I added some Lawn Fawn Glitter Glaze to all of the unicorn hair. I did some Stardust Glaze or Gel Pen. I think it's just a gel pen. So Stardust Gel Pen to the hooves and the horn. So my unicorns had some extra sparkle and shine. See, it was taking away from my little smeared sentiment. And then, because you can never have enough glitter, I decided that I needed to just finish off where that unicorn was peeking up out of the water with some more glitter. And then I will add the flip-flops to my sandy beach here, just to kind of finish out my scene. And then I need to decide how I'm going to fix my smear. So I could have stamped and die cut a sentiment banner for up on top and covered it up. But that's what they make embellishments for, right? When we smear stuff. So I just came in with some embellishments and covered up the worst of it for the most part. You know, you don't notice it. I notice it because I'm always going to notice everything that doesn't look perfect to me. But most people won't notice it. 
<sighs> it's fine. Everything's fine. And because I couldn't stop adding glitz and glitter to this card, I might have gone a little overboard with the embellishing with the cave crystals. Sorry, not sorry. I mean, it's a magical unicorn at the beach card. There should be a lot of sparkle already. Okay. Anyways. Once I decide I have enough sparkle on there, I add some more. I was just trying to make sure that, A, I had odd numbers. Odd, odd number. I can't talk today. Odd numbers. And then I usually try to look for triangles of threes. So I did end up adding another one over onto the side to make all of my triangles complete. So if you're wondering about adding embellishments, that's my theory on it. It doesn't always work, but for the most part, it works. So that is the completed card today. It looks a whole lot better once it was all dried on that ink blend than it did in the process. <sighs> so anyways, have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me and please keep getting inky.